On behalf of myself, Kevin Whitty, and the guys here at Performance Fuel Injection Systems, we want to thank you for your purchase of your marine fuel injection system. Today we're going to install a system on this boat. We're going to show you where we've mounted the ECM, uh, some of the other sensors. Hopefully this will be very informative. Our other YouTube video goes into more detail on how we put, where we put some of the things and why we put them there. Um, how you adjust some of the stuff once it's running. So the other YouTube video goes into just a little bit more detail where this YouTube video we are going to be showing you where we've mounted stuff uh, due to a marine application. So sit back, relax, and hopefully you'll enjoy it and it'll be very informative. As you see, this is a small block Chevy, typical in quite a few of your boats. If we look down in there, we will see the gas tank. We'll be hooking up fuel return and also uh, other stuff to the fuel supply. Um, right now, the boat is completely stock with the carburetor on it and we are going to uh, put the fuel injection system on. We will be replacing the carburetor with a throttle body. Uh, also we'll be replacing the ignition system with a new distributor and other stuff. We will be putting some stuff on without the camera going and so it'll speed up as you look at this and we will be filming where we are putting stuff so sit back and relax and we thank you for watching here we are now we have the carburetor removed we have the riser removed and notice that we put studs in the exhaust manifold and these are going to have to be we made sure that they were one inch longer and what we were doing that for is so to put when we put the O2 plate in, we have to have longer studs because the O2 plate, the oxygen sensor plate, is one inch thicker. So we have the carburetor removed, we put the adapter plate on, and we've installed the distributor, and now we are going to install the O2 plate. The one gasket goes in. This is included in the kit. Make sure that the O2 sensor thread part is towards the front so there's no interference. These are specific for engines. We have Merc Cruiser. This one here is an OMC, which is the same as the newer style Volvo Penta. And then we, we put the gasket on each side, which are included. And then we are going to install this. We have loosened this up, the, the collar here, the rubber boot, to compensate for the one inch plate. The, and we, can, we usually split the difference between the lower and the upper. And one inch is not hard to, hard to um, do. We take this here and put it on there and then we can put our washers and our nuts on there and then we can tighten that down. Okay we've installed our distributor here and in some cases, this is the oil pressure sending unit. We had to put a nipple and a 45 in it to get that oil pressure sending unit away from the distributor because there was interference. And that's an eighth inch. You may have to do that. Some, of, some aren't that big. Some have a line coming off there, but 
most of them anymore are electronic and they do have a sending unit. This is quite large. Um, this boat is a little bit older. I believe this is an 88 boat. And so we had to put that on there. The distributor's in there. I basically marked all the plug wires when they came off and I kind of pointed the distributor rotor where it was when I pulled the other distributor out. Okay, right now we're going to remove the stock fuel pump which is on the side of the block which has to be removed because we will be putting the electric fuel pump on. Okay, now we have the fuel pump removed and we have the block off plate put in and now I want to show one other thing here on the fuel tank we've taken the gas line off and put a barb fitting in the one that we took out is in my hand and if you actually see it inside there's a check ball and these and the, the fuel pump has a check valve in it this is called an anti-siphon valve we replace this fitting because the fuel pump is more of a push pump than a pull pump and this restricts the fuel flow and sometimes can cause premature um, fuel pump failure so we take these out, take this out, and put a barb fitting in the fuel tank. As you, as you can see, we've done that right there. Now we're, gonna, we're going to start putting the throttle body on. And that's fairly easy. We've already got the adapter plate on. And then there's just... Uh, three bolts and we'll start that now okay now we're gonna we're going to install the throttle body put our gasket down the gasket can only go on one way and we do supply stainless steel bolts and if anybody knows anything about boat systems Water and rust is the biggest problem with them. So we use stainless bolts and actually we put stainless bolts with all of our kits. And they're Allen head. And we put them in here. Now on this on this particular boat, we've kind of We've, we're kind of fortunate that the throttle cable right here is, this is a push type throttle instead of a pull. And a lot of times these are adjustable not only here, as you, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some threads in there. And then we will hook this up to down here on the bottom where actually where your um, your transmission kick down would start or would actually go and what we'll do is we'll we'll put a stainless a stainless bolt in here and hook this up so the throttle works and I'll get this out to where it's pretty much close and um, and then we will hook that up okay we have our throttle body installed now and we have our fuel lines hooked up for this one we put a fuel pressure gauge in line because we're going to check the fuel pressure once we start the engine okay we've got our fuel pump mounted now and if you can see down there, it's, we put it on one of the stringers and it's right in behind the fuel tank. And also the, the, the fuel injection line goes up to the, the water separator and from there it goes up to the throttle body, which we now have 
installed. On this one we put a fuel pressure gauge because we'll be checking the fuel pressure when we start the engine. Most of you might not be doing that, but we do here. And then we actually took over for our return line, we actually put it into the vent. Now if you can see that vent line with the two clamps there, we ran up we ran a T into that vent for the return line. Seeing that there's no pressure on the return line, less than one pound, we teed into that. We went to the parts store and we bought a T similar and this is and this is what it's like right here. And that's for the the return line. We actually you can see it goes all the way through. We actually put this in the vent hose and then hooked our 5 16 return line onto there and then clamped it. Now there's another way of doing it also. We have before have made a similar and put it into the fuel intake hose as we're showing you right there. And that works very well also if you can't get to the vent line. So we also do that. Now we're going to hook up the coil wire. In your kit there will be a, a wire with a connector on it. It will be a pink wire and a white wire. And one will say negative pos positive on coil and negative on coil. And this plugs into the distributor. And on this one we have the stock coil right here. And usually I leave everything hooked up to that stock coil except for the distributor wires that we took off from the original distributor. We already have one made up so this will go in here, plugs into the distributor and then we're going to put the wires on the coil. Now remember the coil still needs 12 volts if you're not using if you're using a new coil. This, the distributor does not supply the 12 volts to the, to the coil. So the coil will need 12 volts also. Okay, as you can see, we've put the ECM on the side. There's a spot down on the side of the engine and we've mounted it to the side of the, there's a, I guess there's like a storage area and we've mounted that as you can see. And I'm gonna, and then also you can see where we've actually installed the O2 sensor on the, in the plate right there. That is in between, that is where your um, O2 sensor plate is and then we screw the O2 sensor in the front. Here's another shot of the ECM. Uh, we mounted our relays. There's two screws on the ECM themselves. We actually mounted our relays right there. And you can see this board here where we mounted the ECM. We haven't put a cap on, a, a cover on the ECM yet, but we'll be doing that shortly when we tidy everything else up. Okay, now as you can see, we've um, modified the air cleaner stud. Um, on, on this particular one, we had to put a spacer underneath the, the spark arrestor due to the height of it. This one's not as thick as, some of them are a lot thicker. And then you can put your crankcase tubes on there. And that's and then you can put your, a nut or a wing nut on there and that will be fine. We have done most of this stuff. We've went over a lot of the um, more in detail on our other YouTube video. Uh, we would like you to um, visit that one and watch that in its entirety. It goes into some of the other um, original setup 
things on this video we're basically showing you where we've installed everything on a marine system on this particular boat we put the coolant sensor right here there was already a threaded um, area with a plug in it and seeing that this is has the thermostat above it's actually the thermostat is the whole unit here this is the whole unit the whole thermostat the thermostat is above here so this is before the thermostat and that's where we want to put the coolant sensor before the thermostat and we've ran this a little bit and we've uh, and it does get up to temperature and I think the thermostats in most boats are 160 degrees um, 160 to 180 degrees is fine but it will need a thermostat and make sure your thermostat is working if the thermostat's not working it won't go into closed loop if you're running a closed loop boat system as you can see we with most marine systems we give you plenty of wire to run up to the helm or up by the steering wheel for the check engine light and we'll just click it on here and you can see the check engine light comes on and then that's where we mount that on this particular boat there was already a hole there so we we used the existing hole if you have to drill a hole it's a half inch so we do thank you again for buying a system from us you can visit us on the web at pfisys.com or you can give us a call at 517-975-4770. And thank you for your purchase.